But if you do warn the wicked person and they do not turn from their wickedness or from their evil ways, they will die for their sin, but you will have saved yourself. But if you do warn the righteous person not to sin and they do not sin, they will surely live because they took warning and you will have saved yourself. No extra brownie points here. It's just your responsibility. It's your duty to warn when God tells you that people are in danger. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save their own sons or daughters. They alone would be saved, but the land would be desolate. And here we see that no one else's righteousness is going to save you. And your righteousness will not save another person. Each person has to pick this up. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save their own sons or daughters. They alone would be saved. Since they heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not heed the warning, their blood will be on their own head. If they had heeded the warning, they would have saved themselves. But if you do warn the wicked person to turn from their ways and they do not do so, they will die for their sin, though you yourself will be saved. These are the things that God has established with regard to being watchmen, with regard to who's going to be saved and who's not. And the word does say that it is hard for the righteous to be saved. And the pattern of God is to send his servants when people are not listening. People are getting upset about the message that I'm, that I'm speaking, and I'm not going to change the message for anyone. I'm going to speak exactly what God tells me to speak. If you don't like it, get off the channel. It's as easy as that. I mean, it's just a decision that you make. But the reason I'm doing this video is because one who I do know is doing the work, who does care, I sensed that she had some concern about others hearing the message and being turned off by it. And still, I'm not going to change the message. But what she did say is that people are learning and they are listening. And it's true. There are some people who are bearing the fruit, bearing the fruit of those who are listening and applying and learning and picking up this covenant. But there are more who are not. And I'm not going to just put you in the category of those who are actually bearing fruit because that's not what God is telling me to do. And it's not what his word teaches me to do. Even Jesus himself discerned the fruit that was coming from people and said to them, you are children of the devil because of this. Even Paul himself said, you are saved if you continue in the way of the gospel that's been preached to you. Even Paul himself placed himself in that category. I have to continue to do these things that I tell you to do, lest after preaching, I disqualify myself. Are you different from Paul? I'm not different from Paul. I know what I do every day, and I'm not seeing the fruit, even in those who, by the way, are closest to me in my life, even in some for whom God has me providing, and I am correcting. I am letting you know that this is the message that God is telling me to share, and that is... Bear fruit or you'll be cut off. It's the message of the word. He's the vine. You're the branches. If you don't remain in him, you will be cut off. You will dry up and wither and you will be good for nothing but the fire. But if you are bearing fruit, the vine dresser, the father is going to come around and prune you so that you bear more. And so the way that I discern what's going on here is by God's spirit and by the fruit that I'm seeing. If I'm calling you in, or if he is telling me to call you in to show up for the body of Christ and all throughout scripture, he has warned his people that they need to show up, that they need to receive that invitation. That they need not be concerned about their own house, but you're not. And I'm telling you that, and I'm telling you based on his seasons, based on his appointed times and what happens, what his appointed times signify what they are representing in these last days. The extension of the covenant, which does not mean that you're saved unless you fulfill that covenant. If I'm sharing these things with you and I'm taking my time, because you know what? Heck, if, if I ha I'm in charge of doing uh, some sort of a daily sacrifice every day, well, I could just say, well, I'm only going to do this once a day. I've done my time. I've done my duty. Once a day, I'm going to do a video. But no, I don't do that. I do it as many times as he tells me to do it, as many times as he burns in my heart to say these things to you, that's how many times I do it, whether you're going to like it or you're going to hate it. I don't mince words. I don't water down the truth. I show you exactly where it is in scripture, and there are people who are angry about it. Tough. 
choose you this day. I'm not going to take responsibility for anybody else's wicked heart who can't receive that. You can dislike the comments. You can leave me nasty messages. I'll block them and it'll roll right off my back because you are not one of the ones if that's what you're doing. This message is for those who might be concerned. I want you to understand that I have to speak it this way. And I want you to look at scripture and see that every prophet, every servant, every apostle has spoken this way when people are not returning to God, when they're not bearing the fruit, they have spoken this way. It is not my nature. It does not come natural for me, but this is what God has built me to do. I must speak it the way he tells me to speak it. Do you think that it is in anyone's nature to want to bring persecution and hatred and anger on themselves for a message that does not benefit them? Think about it. 1 Corinthians 15, 2, by this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you've believed in vain. You have to bear the fruit of holding firmly to the word that's been preached to you. And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? How did Jesus discern who was his and who were not? He discerned by the fruit. That's the evidence of whether you're doing this thing. If you've been called in to bear certain fruit and you've been admonished over and over and over and you're still not doing it, it's not because of me. It's not because of God. It is because you are not receiving his building of you. You have not return to him. It is not because you don't know how to return to him or because you haven't been taught or because no one's available to help you. It's because you've chosen not to do it. It's because you are not taking him at his word and you're not bringing yourself into the position to receive him. That's the bottom line. He's not made it easier for some people and harder for others. The only time that he hardens you and makes it impossible is when you have been given enough chance to return to him and then enough is enough. And now that opportunity to enter his rest is gone. So if what's at stake here is your inter eternal life, not even your physical life, okay? If what's at stake here is your eternal life, should I make it easier for you to hear, easier for you to dismiss, or should I shake you up a little bit? So maybe you'll hear it. So maybe you'll take it seriously. Well, according to God, his voice gets louder and his voice and his witnesses get louder. And no one has ever liked the message of his apostles, his prophets, his witnesses and servants. They have never liked his message. It has never been easy to hear. And you know what God told Jeremiah? If I tell you to speak something and you don't speak it, you're, ter you're too afraid of the people. I will terrify you in front of them. You think I'm going to take your bullying over my fear of God? You think I'm going to try to please man over God? Think again. Each one of you who is actually going to be chosen by God, who's been predestined, so he knows the ones who are going to receive him. He knows the ones whose hearts are going to turn to him so that they will be chosen for his strange task. Each one of you are going to understand what I'm going through right now with people who come against, with people who get mad. You know what God says? He will build you like a fortified wall. You think I care that people don't like this? No, it tells me that you need to hear it even more. It tells me that people's hearts are hardened, that they are calloused, that they can't hear that rebuke, that they can't recognize that rebuke in scripture. Those of you who can hear the rebuke, who are responding to it, do not make the mistake as the world does of thinking that kindness and love coddle you all the way to hell. I'm going to say that again because there's a couple people I know need to hear it. Do not make the mistake that the world makes of coddling people and counterfeit loving them all the way to hell. Love speaks the truth. Jesus spoke the truth. The apostles spoke the truth. You need to speak the truth. You need to not get uncomfortable when I'm speaking the truth. And you need to be speaking with people in these same ways. There are so many people who have been extended the opportunity to do all of these things for free, to benefit 
from ever from all of the things that the witnesses are offering for free and they just drop off like it doesn't even matter like they don't even care they treat pagans better than they do god's servants at least a pagan you would call up and say you know i'm not going to be i'm not going to be there anymore but no god offers you a gift through his servants for free he offers you water for free from the well of life and people just drop off like it didn't even matter eh it's just not convenient for me What is that? You know, it's like the 10 that Jesus healed and one came back to glorify God to say thank you. And he said, where are the other ones? Didn't I heal 10 to be healed? To be healed by Christ? Not a big deal. Eh, no big deal. That just happened. Each one of you who are being chosen through your actual lived faith and response to God are going to know what I'm talking about because you need to know what you've been given. And it's going to grieve you. And it's going to outrage you. So if you hear that I'm outraged, you'll be feeling it too. Because I can't believe how wicked people are. I can't believe how wicked I've been in my life. That I could take it or leave it. The gift he gives for free. Does it mean that he gives that gift without us needing to respond to it? No. It means that this gift is for everyone regardless of whether you have money whether you're marginalized or oppressed, whatever your race is, the gift is for free. The invitation is free. You would pour out all of your money to be saved by a pagan. I did it. And yet what is given to you in love and for free, you reject. You need to know that God is getting ready to extend the invitation to others because those in the kingdom don't care. Judgment has begun with his house. He's separating the wheat from the tares. And I am watching these parables in real time. I'm watching the church getting replaced. Please don't tell me to soften up because I won't. I will continue to speak the way that God tells me to speak. I will continue to discern the way that God tells me to discern. I will continue to test the spirit the way that God tells me to test the spirit. I will not live according to the rules of this world, and you should not either. Is what I'm doing not in love? Is the message that God is speaking, it's the final hour, get it together. Is that not in love? Think about what you believe. Think about how well that's worked in counterfeit Christianity. As long as you're putting money in the plate, no one's going to bother you. Well, you're not putting any money in the plate here. My assumption is that you came here for truth. And if you changed your mind, well, then that's your choice.